Welcome to Care Coordination and Interoperable Health IT Systems, Overview of Interoperable Health IT, Lecture C. This unit will cover the following learning objectives. 1. Define healthcare interoperability. 2. Summarize the vision and benefits of interoperable health IT. 3. Identify and examine several barriers and challenges to obtaining interoperable health IT. And 4. Discuss the U.S. strategy for health interoperability. This is Lecture C, where we will discuss the national strategy for health interoperability. ONC's national strategy is to build an interoperable health IT ecosystem that supports a learning health system. Let's look at the importance of this concept as presented in the Federal Health IT Strategic Plan. The Federal Health IT Strategic Plan is a five-year strategic plan with a vision of high-quality care, lower costs, a healthy population, and engaged people. The mission was to improve the health and well-being of individuals and communities through the use of technology and health information technology that is accessible when and where it matters most. The functional goals of the strategic plan are 1. Advance person-centered and self-managed health. 2. Transform healthcare delivery and community health. And 3. Foster research, scientific knowledge, and innovation. These three goals need interoperable health IT. So there is one more goal which all three of these goals rely on. That fourth goal is Goal 4, which is to enhance the nation's health IT infrastructure. Let's look at the fourth goal in more detail. In Goal 4, there are five objectives. Objective A is to finalize and implement the nationwide interoperability roadmap. Objective B is to protect the privacy and security of health information. Objective C is to identify, prioritize, and advance technical standards to support secure and interoperable health information and health IT. Objective D is to Increase user and market confidence in the safety and safe use of health IT products, systems, and services. And finally, Objective E is to advance a national communications infrastructure that supports health, safety, and care delivery. If you look at all of these objectives, you can see most of them talk about the nation's health IT infrastructure, including interoperability. Objective A specifically calls out the creation and implementation of a roadmap to interoperability. ONC published that roadmap in October 2015. It's called Connecting Health and Care for the Nation, a Shared Nationwide Interoperability Roadmap. Let's look at this journey and its sections. Imagine parallel roads on our journey to the learning health system. The roadmap is divided into three sections, or roads, each with goals and milestones. One set of roads is the drivers. A next set of roads is the policy and technical components. And the next set of roads is outcomes. Let's look at drivers. And actually, there is only one driver, but it's very important. For us to successfully achieve interoperable IT, we need to change our payment and regulatory environment. This means the country needs to move from payment for care quantity to a value-based model with payment for care quality across the continuum. If providers are responsible for care quality across the continuum, interoperability will be much more important. We need to develop a supportive payment and regulatory environment by creating a progressive shift from 2016 to 2024 towards increasingly value-based care. For more information about value-based care, please check out Component 23, which is dedicated entirely to this concept. A supportive payment and regulatory environment will motivate providers to value interoperability. 
Let's look at our next section, or set of roads, policy and technical components, and these have quite a few parts. We need shared decision making, rules of engagement, and accountability. This is where all parties agree to the same standards and rules for exchange. Also, we need a ubiquitous secure network infrastructure, as well as verifiable identity and authentication of all participants. Additionally, we need consistent representation of authorization to access electronic health information. We need consistent understanding and technical representation of permission to collect, share, and use identifiable health information. To make sure the infrastructure works, we need the ability to do industry-wide testing and certification. We need all parties exchanging data to follow standards, such as consistent data semantics and formats, which are the content and definitions of the data being exchanged. Standard secure services, which are standard mechanisms for querying and other operations on the data being exchanged. And consistent secure transport techniques. Also, we need accurate individual data matching so that we ensure that we have the right provider, device, or other entity. Finally, there needs to be standard directories in which a system can look up standard services and locations for patient information. Now, let us look at the third section or set of roads called outcomes. What are we doing this for? What is our goal? We need to make strides toward that goal. Our main beneficiaries are individuals, patients, consumers, caregivers, etc. We have to increase access to longitudinal electronic health information, allow patients to contribute to that information, and be able to direct that information to any electronic location. For the provider, we need the provider workflows and practices to include, in a way that makes sense for the providers, consistent sharing. Let's look at that roadmap and start with the first few years. At the end of 2015, where meaningful use has been achieved for much of the country, with 94% of eligible hospitals and 78% of eligible providers are EHR users. This will take us to the end of 2017, where across the nation, the goal is that we will send, receive, find, and use priority data domains to improve healthcare quality and outcomes. Moving on our journey, at the end of 2020, we will now have expanded data sources and users in the interoperable health IT ecosystem to improve health and lower costs. What that means is now we will have data sources from places that are not just doctor's offices, eligible providers, or eligible hospitals. We are going to go beyond to rehabilitation facilities, home health agencies, etc. We will be getting information from patients and new technologies like telehealth and mobile devices. By the end of 2024, we will now have achieved a learning health system with the person at the center of that system. This system will be able to continuously improve care, public health, and science through real-time data access. We will have arrived at interoperable health IT. This concludes Lecture C of Overview of Interoperable Health IT. To summarize, ONC's national strategy is to build an interoperable health IT ecosystem that supports a learning health system. ONC also developed a federal health IT strategic plan that has four goals, one of which is to enhance the nation's health IT infrastructure. In October 2015, ONC published the Shared Nationwide Interoperability Roadmap. This concludes Unit 3, Overview of Interoperable Health IT. The summary of this unit is that first, the national vision of interoperable health IT is to build an interoperable health IT ecosystem that supports a learning health system. Second, there are many benefits from interoperability, including having information available to support improved care and to improve population and public health, engaging patients and caregivers, and having more efficient and value-added care.
Third, the challenges to interoperable health are 1. Not enough standardization. 2. Not fully used standards. 3. Patient matching. 4. Privacy and security. 5. Incentive alignment. 6. Provider workflow. 7. Larger ecosystem. And 8. Costs. And finally, there is a federal health IT strategic plan and a shared interoperability roadmap to help guide the journey towards interoperable health IT.